Yo, 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 this T-Top, top busy the bear, king of the state, man. I want to shout out my dog, Mikey T, the movie star, huh? My next guest is somebody you might be familiar with because you've probably seen him on URL. You've probably seen him on Houston Barcode, Spit the Heat. You've probably seen him battling some of the best, Sue Surf, Arsenal, Charlie Clips. In other words... This person more than likely battled your favorite battle rapper. T-Top, welcome to the show, my guy. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you for having me, King. Appreciate that. Hell of an intro. I want to ask, because I ask others this as well, what's your ratio, you know? What is your win-to-loss ratio in battle rap? Mm. Like, you know, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm being honest, I think the, uh, the general consensus is like, I mean, you know, you're gonna have fan bases that always bum 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 whatever. They're gonna fight for their for their um person or whatever. But if I'm being honest, I would say I got at least a ninety five percent win ratio. Like I really don't be taking L's too much, you know what I'm saying? Um, I have a couple. I have a couple, but I don't really take too many. Who would you say is in the upper echelon with you? You know, I'm not trying to pitch you against nobody, but I'm trying to get a general idea of who can mess with you and who would you say is in the top 10 with you? All right, so none of them niggas can fuck with me. Let's put it out there. Yeah, I mean, anytime I lost a battle, I beat myself. You feel me? I'm a, I'm a either lack of preparation or whatever I was, you know what I mean? Whatever it was at the time. But so none of these niggas can fuck with me, honestly. But if it was niggas, I would say like in my same caliber of niggas, yeah, I could, I could name 10 niggas that's in my same caliber of niggas that's like dogs and this shit. Um, I would have to say like a Briz. Uh, New Jersey twerk, rum nitty, DNA is a dog, um, Fonz, uh, Low Deluxe is my favorite. That's my goat. Um, you got you got your bad newses if you're looking for newer talent. Um, and he's like a dog just like us. Um, who else you got out there that, that's crazy? Um, so many guys you got swamp out there a breath of fresh air for the carolinas that's going crazy he done swooped up in the rankings fast um there's just so many guys that's like powerhouses in this culture you know what i'm saying it's like ticket sales and and competition competitiveness fan bases that everything that that you want in a big matchup you know what i'm saying because you know once you once you do smaller matchups everybody ain't got the same it's not the same battle, you know what I'm saying? Like when you battling a big guy that's battling, you battling him, his fan base, his aura, his slogans, his everything that comes along with that. Then you got to think of like those type of powerhouse names, like like I was naming. Now, even your serves and and free to wave, um, just just names like that. That's like powerhouses, and you know you know what they're gonna do when they get on the car. So I wanted to get a little bit of an understanding on your earlier years. You know, what is North Carolina like? You know, I've never been over there. It's the South, man. It's like the introduction to the South. Um, so, um, Carolina, like a lot, a lot of a lot of places from like. So if you don't know, like we're in the middle of the of I ninety five. Like if you're going straight down to Florida to New York, Connecticut, like we're we're in the middle. So we like the meeting point of where the South and the North meets. So it's it's heavy on a drug infested state, you know what I'm saying? It's heavy on um out of towners because you know we got so many different people traveling up and and like this is the meeting point of down 95. So when you get here, it's more like it's a country feel. It's definitely the south, you know. We got fields and I got a field right across the street from my house, you know what I'm saying? Um it's fields, it's trees and shit. And then you got the city parts like Raleigh or or um like Raleigh got certain city parts. I live in Raleigh, but I live in like the country part. Um, Charlotte is more of our city based area of Charlotte or Greensboro. But all in all, it's like country town living. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it's really cool living for your family and for your kids. It's really cool, you know, it, unless you live in the part, the little projects like that. But all in all, it, it's cool, man. I love Carolina. Is there a scene in North Carolina as far as battle rap? <laughs> Nah, you got like little, you got leads that pop up every now and then, but nah, it's not like a heavy thing here. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a, a thing here. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. It ain't been a thing here in a while, like years, since since we was doing it here. You know what I'm saying? Um, nah. No. How did you get started with everything? You know, did you say, who's the hottest battle rapper? 
here. I'm going to go battle them. You know what I mean? These oh, yeah. Sort of like that. So how I started was I was I was doing music, of course. But um, the guy who was producing my, my, my mixtape at the time, and this is years ago, maybe around like 09 or something like that, 2010, maybe. Um, He was producing my record and whatever. He was rushing my studio session because he had to go do another guy's studio session. I'm like, yo, what's the rush? He like, nah, this guy's like, he be on the radio and he battle dudes every Friday. Like his name is popping. I'm like, man, I get up there and smoke. And never did like an official battle. Like, you know, of course we rap battle in the hood or whatever, school and like that. But I was like, dog, no, call up there smoky man. Just because I felt, I felt kind of disrespected that this nigga try to rush my session to go to this nigga session. So I called up the radio that night, nine o'clock, and I rapped and I smoked it, bro. I smoked it just like that. So the way they did it was like if you beat the champion, the champion get a chance to come back and, and you know, say get their face back next week to reclaim their spot. He came back next week, I smoked him again. Now I'm the new champion of North Carolina. This guy from T Top, not this guy named T Top. Nobody ever heard of me as far as like on this scene, like that. And I just took over, and I was the champion. I battled every Friday. I was the champion for 16 months. So I battled every Friday for over a year. And it was just, they're just killing guys, killing guys, killing guys every week, bro. So my name just got so big in North Carolina to, like, it was just the point where, like, even you didn't know my face, you know what I'm saying, unless you follow me on MySpace or uh, Facebook at the time or whatever it was. But it was just, you knew the name, you knew the raspy voice, you knew, you knew, you know what I mean? Like, like that's how my, my prison following got big because a lot of guys in jail just had the radio. So they would listen to me every Friday. Like I get so many, I still get letters and people, when people come home, they tell me, yo, bro, I listen to you every day. Yo, you was my inspiration in there. Yo, you was battling. I told niggas you was going to make it. Like shit, I get those stories a lot, bro. Like a, a whole bunch. So I was doing that for, I did that for 16 months. So, you know, like just everybody got accustomed to hearing me. Everybody was like, I developed the fan base from, from that. You know what I'm saying? Like a North Carolina following and, and people uh put me in the category as one of those Carolina spitters. And that was like 09, 10, 2010, maybe 11. After facing Briz in the final round of the BET URL Freestyle Friday tournament, what made you want to actually link up with him to form a duo? You know, like out of all people, why Briz? Because I came in with Briz. So me and Briz started from when we first had our league in North Carolina, RBE, I mean, RBC, Rap Battle Central. Um, like I was I was one of the faces of the league and um, and Briz was as well. You know what I'm saying? So we, we was always like partners. Like we went to the UFF together. Like we in the same, like in the hotel rooms, practicing for these other guys. Like this is my brother. Like this is my dog. You know what I'm saying? So we we would have formed a two on two no matter no matter what, like once they got popular. Um, but yeah, this this was like my dog, my bro. Like we came in this in this together. I wasn't even gonna get in the UFF tournament because he was in the tournament and I wanted him to win. Like that was our first conversation. He was like, yo, I want you to get in the UFF tournament on BT season three. I'm like, all right, hell yeah, who win it? They ran down the names up, they were like Briz and I'm like, nah, that's my brother. Let him win. Call me back for season four. You know what I'm saying? But um but yeah, they they got me into it um in the season. Um, and I just you know I made sure we was on opposite sides of the bracket. So if anything, we just had to meet in the finals and whatever, just have a good friendly battle. You know what I'm saying? So like we was there together the whole time in the hotels, every night smoking, drinking, practicing our rounds for these other guys. Then when it came down to the finals, it was just like, all right, nigga, I'm in my room, you in your room. I'm up, I'm up this end of the block, you up that end of the block practicing. So it was like kind of weird, you know what I mean? But um, so it was only natural for us to form a two-on-two, no matter how the battle went. And then you guys go on to battle Murder Mook and Calico. T-Top, what happened with that battle? Um, That battle, so the battle was rescheduled a couple of times. Like the battles been posted that went down originally in Charlotte, North Carolina, when they had the two-on-two here. It's supposed to originally went down here. And um, the venue shut us down right before our battle. Like the whole car went on and performed, and then the venue shut down right before we were supposed to battle. So we never got to battle, and we had like a little, like a little minor incident outside or whatever. So tempers was already high and and everything for the before the before we even went to the battle. You know what I'm saying? So from the last incident, so we get to the battle. Shit, it was a regular day for me for real. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna keep it funky. It's regular. So we get to the battle. We doing the battle. I I I I um and 
and the fight happened. You know what I'm saying? Like my focus really was on the crowd. So I really wasn't even knowing what was going like everybody and their mama seen the footage. So I'm just looking at the crowd, you know, I'm reacting like, oh, these niggas is trash type shit. Like they they was they really wasn't spitting shit. So I didn't really know what was going on on the side of me, you know what I'm saying? So when I just, all I know is I felt like a little nudge and shit and looked over. So it's like, cause I'm leaning on my man's, my homeboy, like, the, you know what I'm saying? God bless the dead, my man Zay with the orange shirt. I'm leaning on him, just looking at the crowd. So when he moves, when he moves, I guess like, cause I, I don't even know what's going on at first. So when he moved to go towards Mook and Kyle and no shit, I guess the, the swinging had already happened. That's when I fall, because I'm leaning on this nigga. You know what I'm saying? So I was chilling this shit. You know what I'm saying? Just doing my thing. My, my bro moved. When he moved, I just fall back. So really, like, I ain't know exactly what happened until, until like, I see. I knew it was on. I knew shit was on. I just ain't know what caused it. You know what I'm saying? Which I really didn't give a fuck what caused it at the moment. It was just on. So when, um, when I really got back or got to the hotel and was really able to analyze the footage, I seen what was going on. Like, I ain't even know it started with Brez or, and Mook. I didn't know who it started with. Ante Rogers. I didn't know who the fuck it started with at first. You know what I'm saying? I just know, oh, shit, I'm falling like a motherfucker. So, you know, after I fell, then I realized what the fuck was going on. But, yeah, that's what, so that was that was it. You know what I'm saying? It, ain't, it wasn't really too much after that, like a, like a fucking bar fight. Shit wasn't about nothing. Ain't nobody get hurt, stabbed, killed. Eh? So was it a bar that Briz had said to murder Mook and then all the melee popped off? Nah, I think when they when they was rapping, I don't know if Mook was touching Briz or Briz was touching Mook. I just know their arms got like interlocked or whatever, and you see them pushing like, come on. And then that's when the swing happened. So it wasn't a bar. It wasn't a bar. Like it's on YouTube. You can watch it up to that point. <laughs> it wasn't a bar that that was said that that meant that caused that action. Um, it was the interlocking and the the physicalness. You know what I'm saying of, of arms and shit. You see Mook on Briz. You see Briz grab Mook arms. So it was like to me that was that was the cause of the of the situation for real. You know, Murder Mook is somebody who's really capitalizing off of battle rap as like the the prices, the salaries for battle rappers has increased dramatically. You know, like not everybody can go out there and have a second life in this entertainment industry like Math Hoffa has. You know, not every battle rapper is going to be a podcaster. Like, why do you think Murder Mook did that? You know, why do you think he tried to do that? Like, he could have ended up banned. Um, whatever. Um, shit. I mean, whatever he thought, whatever he felt like in the moment was happening. You know what I'm saying? If he felt like, I, uh, Briz, you touching me too much or, 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 you know what I'm saying? I don't know if Briz was feeling like, nigga, you was touching me first. I'm not even, I don't even know who touched who first. You know what I'm saying? I just know from, from what he says in, in interviews and shit, you know, it was a lot of interlocking and shit like that. And he just swung. So, yeah, man. And he, he swung, but he, he, he still didn't hit Briz if you look at the footage, but he definitely swung on Briz. You know, Smack said the money is never coming back in battle rap. I wanted to get like, what's your take on that, and where do you see the state of battle rap like five years from now? Man, y'all let Smack tell y'all that if y'all want to. Um, shit, I'm a, uh, I've been booked. I've had eight battles this year, bro. Um, I think three of them have been one rounders, so that means five of them have been three rounders. I've been paid good. I don't like, you know, like. All right, so what I think of this since the caffeine deal is gone, niggas be expecting, you know what I'm saying, certain numbers. So I think that's what Smack meant by, like, the money's gone and, like, that caffeine situation is gone and it ain't coming back. You know what I mean? Because it ain't, it ain't like, like, Smack, Smack pays well. You know what I'm saying? So, and every other lead that I go to that, I, that you see my face on pays well. You know what I mean? I just battled in London a week ago. I had three battles in one week, Cleveland, Atlanta and London and won all three of them in one week and made plenty of money, plenty of chicken. You know, so um, the, as far as the whole ain't no money in battle rap, I think that's the don't come asking me for a lot of money line. You know what I'm saying? Type shit. Cause you know, you know. But the money here, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I wouldn't lie to you, Mike. Yeah, I'd be like, yo, shit, real right now, nigga. We waiting on another situation. The money good right now, okay. I ain't gonna front. 
facts. It's evident, man. Would you see all the mainstream rappers coming into the battle rap scene? Yeah, yeah. Niggas want to battle, bro. Niggas want to. They want to be a part of battle rap. They want to be at the events. They want to feel the energy. They want to see us shine. They want to see us win. So, like, battle rap ain't going nowhere in the next five years. This shit is just going skyrocket, bro. As long as as long as um the culture grows, that's what it's gonna take. As long as the culture grows, then um we'll be all right, bro. You know that's what anything is. The more the more it grow, the more money it's gonna bring in. The more viewership it's gonna bring in. The more sponsors it's gonna bring in. You know everything goes up once the culture spreads and keep and keeps getting bigger. And it has been over the last ten years. It's been that huge. We know went from getting, and I mean, a a, a five thousand dollar check to thirty forty thousand a battle. You know what I'm saying? So it, it don't. I don't be seeing when niggas be like, yo, it ain't no money or battle rappers don't get this money or don't get battle rappers get eight hundred dollars to rap and or you gotta win your fucking battle to get some money. I hate when I hear that shit. How much do y'all win? Oh my god, that line pisses me off. It's like, dog, I get paid. My tickets is hundred and twenty dollars general admission. You know what I'm saying? I go to rapper shows who who, who tickets is cheaper than that. You know what I mean? My my tickets is one hundred twenty dollars general admission, two fifty for a VIP, three seventy five stage passes type type of wave. You get what I'm saying? Pay per views fifty sixty dollars. We doing ten thousand of those. Like stop. You can't say like battle rappers is getting eight hundred dollars, and it might be some, but you gotta know like this. That's not a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not a thing. We get very good money, bro. We don't we don't have to work jobs. This is our this is our fucking job. We dedicate our life to this. You know what I'm saying? Like this is what we do. Just like a motherfucker who a mechanic. Like this is our job. We're gonna make sure that we get compensated very well. You know what I'm saying? Like if you do the numbers, you just look like it it's so easy to just just do simple math. If you see an arena that holds twenty five hundred people sold out, you look at the ticket sales online. It's not hard to do math, you know, pay-per-view. You can, um, you probably can't see the numbers of how many people viewing, but you can see the interactions on Twitter and how many times we go number one, you know what I'm saying, or number one or number two on Twitter every time we do something. Then you should know how the viewership is and know this ain't no $500 type of thing we got going on, you know what I'm saying? Like, this, this ain't that. So we we make very good money as well, as well getting that, man. Uncle Smack just be... Uncle Smack trying to keep the motherfucking leeches away. The motherfuckers who think they're gonna come around and just ask for a big bag and and not be here for the for the brand and for the league. You know what I'm saying? Like for for them niggas, nah. Yeah, the money ain't here. If you ain't here, if you ain't here when if you ain't trying to be around when the money ain't here, don't be around when the money is here. You know what I'm saying? Type of way. I respect it, but yeah, my my money ain't changed. <laughs> money ain't changed, man. I'm gonna keep it funky. You tapped into one of my live videos after Geechee Gotti had brought me up when he had a battle in Philly where he rapped about my altercation with Leek Moss. Mm -hmm. I rapped about it one time, too. My shit was fine, too. I ain't gonna lie. You <laughs> rapped true. about my altercation with Leek Moss? Yeah, yeah. Nigga, this battle rap, nigga. We watch everything. We see Are you everything. serious? I dead ass. I was, I think I was, I might have been battling Mike P and I and I used a Mike a Mikey T because I called him Mikey T or some shit. I might have used like a flip like that. That's but great. Was, I appreciate that. It was fire though. It was fire. Yeah, yeah, man. We watch. We gotta. We got. We gotta be on it, man. We gotta know what's going on. We gotta use it. Trending things. We gotta use it. Nah, facts, man. I appreciate everybody that shouts me out in whatever manner. You know, I love battle rap. You know, when I first met Geechee Gotti, he was like literally labeled as the BET 2018 Battle Rapper of the Year. And now he's been known for dropping some of the most controversial bars. I wanted to ask, what did you think of Geechee Gotti putting Easy the Block Captain on blast during the battle on Chrome 23? Battle rap, man. That shit, that shit is expected. That shit was going to come no matter no matter who he battled, that shit was going. You know, I just happened to be geeky. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that was going to come. That was uh, that's inevitable in battle rap. Once, once any piece of your business is out there, it could be something positive. We're gonna make it look negative. So definitely, if it's something negative, we about to make a movie out of it. You know what I'm saying? That's just battle rap. So it, I wasn't shocked. I wasn't surprised. I love this fucking battle rap. You know what I'm saying? Geechee went up there. He executed it how he's supposed to.
You know what I'm saying? So I, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't shocked about it. I was just like, oh, shit. Here we go. You know. Geechee said, when they find out you're effing the help, it can ruin the image. Do you <laughs> think if Easy and Remy had a relationship, it would really affect either of their brands? I mean, yes and no. Because it's like, it's like, yes and no. I mean, yes, yes and no. Yes and no. I mean, because it's like, because in one hand, it's like, fuck it, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But then on that, but then on the other hand, it's like, shit, niggas was keeping it a little secret and hiding. And you know what I'm saying? If that is it, I don't even know if it is it. I'm just saying. So it's like, it's like, yeah, I mean, shit. It, it's whatever, bro. It's whatever, man. Niggas, niggas be fucking around with, 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 with people. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I think it, um, I think it it put easy in a new spotlight, you know what I'm saying? Um, that that furthered from from battle rap, I think that put him in a new spotlight, whether good or bad. Um, Remy Remy always in headlines because she Remy, you know, she been in headlines since then. Elite, motherfucker. So you know, um, so it's just how you want to look at it. It could be good or bad. It's just how you want to look at it. You know, anybody tripping. Facts and Remy Ma is a new league owner. So, you know, <laughs> Dichi also brought up how, you know, let's talk about angles. You know what I mean? He brought up how Papoose would always talk up Remy Ma for six years. You know what I mean? How must Remy Ma feel as, like, you know, she's sitting there like smack in between these guys? How must she feel he hearing these angles involving her relationship play out during the battles? I mean, anybody that 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 hear about their personal business, whether it's false or or, or true, you don't feel some kind of way. You know what I'm saying? But I think as a league owner, she she kept it professional and she did what the fuck she was supposed to do, which was stand there and and let the guys rap that that she hired to rap. You know what I'm saying? Um, like whether she felt good or bad about it, she did what what the fuck she was supposed to do. She didn't get out there and say, "Nigga, you lying." Yo, hold on, stop. He lying. Yo, he lying. She didn't say, oh, well, it's my business if it is true. She didn't do nothing. She kept it funky. Like, I mean, she kept it like, yo, I'm a professional. Uh, this is my league. You're paid to rap. Say what the fuck you want to say. Yo, you're paid to rap. Say what the fuck you want to say. You know what I'm saying? You can say, I, I don't care what you say. You know, um, now maybe she had a discussion of, of maybe after the battle. Like, nigga, why you was up there lying on my black ass? You know what I'm saying? But, or, but. At the moment, in the moment, she no matter how she felt, she kept it professional, which Smack does all the time. You know, like niggas have Smack bars every battle. Niggas, somebody is pissed off at Smack or telling something that Smack did or whatever. And and other league owners, it's not just them. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I've seen some league owners say, you know, do the cap, and or I've seen some league owners um wait till the footage drop and and edit the footage and and you know do do little trickeries and shit like that, but. To me, she just kept it professional and just let her, her, the the hired artists get their bars off. So um, I don't really know how she felt, but I know I couldn't. I ain't see her sweat. I wanted to ask, you know, you've battled Charlie Clips in the past, and recently Easy the Block Captain just did. Did you have a chance to see that battle or clips from it? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, I was there. I was there. I was in the building. You were there. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was there. I was in the building for that one. I was live in Miami for that one right there. Shout out to um, Chrome 3. They put that together. Um, Yeah, I was there for that. Well, at first, you know, Easy the Block Captain was saying, "Does is it even worth it to battle Charlie Clips? Yeah, Charlie Clips is, is a motherfucking legend in this shit. Like, a motherfucker gonna be a fool not to want to battle with Charlie Clips. You know, if you're in this culture and shit, he's he's one of the top tier, god tier, whatever you want to call it, MCs. You know what I'm saying? And he's had a he had that on his back since he entered the URL. You know what I'm saying? Like he's been looked at like the gym since he since he entered URL. You get what I'm saying? So no matter if he had a couple bad performances lately, that's Charlie Clips. You know what I'm saying? Like we gotta 
Yeah, hell yeah, he's worth he's worth fucking battling because as quick as he he might have a bad performance, he'll hit next battle he'll have performance of the year. That's what we talking about for the next year and a half. You know what I'm saying? So hell yeah, he is, bro. He's a legend. Yeah, he's definitely worth the battle. I think that's just something to say because I mean you you can't say that because he hasn't been looking good. So if I'm battling him, I would say that. You know what I'm saying? If I'm battling him, I would say that. But in reality. Nigga, I wouldn't be battling him if I, you know, if I thought, you know, that he wasn't worthy to battle. You get what I'm saying? So, like, it's like I said, we we'll take anything and make it look crazy, you know, or make it seem crazy, or whatever. Like, nigga, why am I even battling this guy? He ain't. You get what I'm saying? He, he been trash for the last whatever, whatever, whatever you want to say. But you know, that's still clips, and at any moment, he could give you battle of the year. And we found out this weekend. Easy even admitted that Charlie Clips beat him two to one. You know, he said after he did the angle with Remy and being the king of angles, I got to say, what's your take on clips bringing up one of the most popular videos of all time? Lean back. Lean back. <laughs> oh, I think uh, I just think it like opened up a new angle, man, because it's like once. Excuse me. That's when you start having debatables and losses is when niggas got good angles. Excuse me. Good angles on you. And now I think um, Easy has created a, a lot of angles on himself. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's him or, or just the situations he's in, he's created a lot of angles on himself. And you know, like you said, I, I do angles, and angles can angles touch here. You know, like punch lines is hard. We love fire lines, but an angle hits home. You get what I'm saying? So when when niggas is is using angles and and fire people that like clever people and find clever ways to use the angles like clips is one of them angle guys who if he gets an angle he's gonna make it funny he's gonna make you feel he's gonna be serious he's gonna it's gonna be so many mixed emotions in that angle it's gonna be like damn he's picking them apart easy said he wasn't worried about your angles but what do you think now with him admitting the angles got the better of him in his last battle uh he said he wasn't worried about my angles yeah, remember in that video y'all had together, he was like, yo, I'm not really worried about your angles. I'm more worried about the old style of T-Top yeah. coming out. And you were like, yeah. you're not worried about my angles? Um, Angles hurt, bro. That, like, niggas will play that game like, oh, what are you going to do, angles? That's because they want to deflect it. They don't want you to do angles because angles hurt. You get what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, um, nigga, Shit, niggas will learn, man. You get the angles on you, man. You get a motherfucker that know how to construct those shits and, and attack the angles, man. Those shit's real, Mike. I'm telling you. Those shit's real, bro. Those shit's a, a change the way you look at yourself when you get home. A good angle, a good talking to, that's a good talking to. You get what I'm saying? Like, you know, like those type of things always work. You know what I'm saying? So now that, that Easy has those on him, because before he didn't, it's just like, yo, he's just going in there with this drug talk, and now he's going to have to stop counter writing and def you know what i'm saying he's gonna, he's gonna have to now he's gonna have to start adding a whole nother element to his writing game and to his performance you feel me he's gonna start rebuttaling that shit he's gonna have to start preparing for that shit because niggas are gonna use it especially if they know oh this is how you win or this is like his last three four three or four battles has been like that when niggas use the remy angle you know what I'm saying? Whether it's John John, whether it's Geechee, whether it's Clips. Um, yeah, so like now you got angles on you, man. You gotta deflect them shits. Like I went from when when niggas started getting angles on me, I went to a defense battle rapper. Like, nigga, you're not about to beat me with no angle because I'm a I'm a I'm a counter right for that shit. You know what I'm saying? So you just gotta know how to play. Have you had a chance to hear the diss tracks that Easy and Cassidy dropped on each other? I didn't know Easy Drop. Well, yeah, Easy Drop. Easy had a diss track called High Cinnamon. Nah, that that's for Hitman. So Hitman, Hitman, the Easy was going at it first. And so yeah. Hitman, so Hitman, and Hitman he the, dropped jabs at Cassidy on that, saying that his battle rap with uh, Freeway got canceled, and that he yeah. should drop his battle price. Yep. So yeah. So so that this the the this song High Cinnamon was was for Hitman, but he did throw jabs at um. Add cast in it, then cast just <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Cast wasn't playing, so cast went up there and just got crazy. And um, 
I remember Easy said he's gonna he was gonna respond to it after the clips battle. He's gonna do like a, a a diss track just for Cass, but I don't think he released it yet. But um, and I don't think now now that the battle went how it went, I don't really see him focusing on on that no more. I think he's he gonna be more focused on the get back. I don't think he's really gonna be focused on the cash shit no more. Let's cash dump again. Now, if he would have won the clips battle, I think he would have been more eager to respond to cast afterwards. You know what I'm saying? I think all that momentum would have helped. You know what I'm saying? But you know, but I don't, I don't, I don't see him responding right now to the cast shit. Yeah, honestly, man, people want to talk about Drake and Kendrick Lamar. Cassidy has one of the craziest diss tracks out right now. Easy come, easy go. So not go is wild. Yeah, it really is. It's it's almost like hit him up level. Almost. It's almost. Yeah, it's, it's yo. I ain't gonna front. It's 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 a good it's a good diss record. I would have loved to hear easy response, especially like in a timely fashion. I would have loved to hear that. I ain't gonna front because he was he was he was on easy ass pause. So, do you think that Remy Ma is gonna make the investment? You know what I mean, and do Cassidy versus Easy the Block Captain? Um, I don't know. Like I don't know, if she, I don't know if she's invested in the battle for real like that to get that battle done, but um I do think that's a battle that needs to happen. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know I might have to holler at my good folks at the uh Black Male Voting Project and try to get that one done. You know what I'm saying? That's that's one that we need. You know what I'm saying? We need that man. So I'ma holler at I'ma holler at my people, my my mayor, Mayor Mondell, and um and we might have to get that one. So if Remy playing with it. We want cast it easy. Oh yeah, you feel me? Blackmail voting project. Do you think Easy versus Cassidy could be battle of the year? Um, definitely, bro. It's a grudge match it's for Philly. Um, I don't think it's like a long term grudge match, but when you got two people from the same place that feel like they're the king of the spot, feel like they're doing the most for the for the city and shit like that, <laughs> that's definitely a battle of the year contender. You know. So we might have to we might have to make that happen, bring that to Carolina or something. We need that. So you had said we all watched your career die and rebirth again. You said that about Sue Surf. Yes, sir. Why did you say that Tay Rock gave Sue Surf life? Um, free the wave. I was feeling like at the time, um, well, not just me, the coach was feeling at the time like Surf was choking in a lot of battles and he was just not giving his one hundred percent effort. He was he was losing a lot of battles or having debatables and it just wasn't like the surf we was used to so we watched this like we was watching his career die because he he really wasn't putting forth the effort like if you remember that that time period but then when he got with rock and they did like the the gun titles and that movement it was like a breath of fresh air for for um for surf you know what i'm saying once that one because tay rock was on the road tay rock was surf was niggas you know we had the what the fuck happened to surf day it was just so many things that was going on as far as battle wise and tay rock was just on like a momentum wave right then. So it was more like um I felt like Tay Rock the 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 birth of gun titles gave Sue Surf a new a new wave, a new identity, a new uh uh or like a rebirth, you know. So that's when your career died, then rebirth again, because Rock gave you life like it's your third offense. So that's how I felt about that line. Yeah, man. You know, Sue Surf was going through something extremely crazy that I don't think a lot of people expected. I mean they literally brought a helicopter by the man's crib. Yeah, they wild. They wild up. It was wild. But right now, you know, I think it was revealed. I believe it was revealed five years. He's got a manageable amount of time. I think he might be home next year, man. So I hope um, that's what we all hoping for. I think he might be home next year. Um, you know, with time served, and then you get you know a certain amount of time cut off. You know, they, you know, you ain't got to do one hundred percent of the time. So with all of that in there, he might be home. 2025 honestly into 2024 hopefully but my, maybe 2025 do you think surf will return and pick up right where he left off hell yeah oh shit. or bigger or bigger man this is surf you know what i'm saying i'm free to wave man he gonna he gonna come yeah so yeah I don't, he definitely ain't gonna go down hell no nah. it's gonna be either where he was at pick up on that same momentum well, that shit might even skyrocket more, bro. Honestly. Yeah, man. Smackhead must have kept the books closed for something. You know what I mean? It's got to be for Sue Surf's return home. <laughs> it might be, bro. It might be, King. He might, he might be working on a little special bag for, for, for Surf when he get home. 
And who knows, we could get T Top Sue Surf too. You know, you got to get your get back. Yeah, nah, he got to get his get back. I won. I'm just saying, man. Nah, hell no, nah, Mikey T. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just say shit. Fuck that. Uh, he got his get back. No, I was man. nerfing them to five to his back like I'm nerfing them to nerve him. Went to the loo, got smoked by nerfing them. They murdered him. Called out Moop, but he won't deserve it. Though. We all, yeah, believe that, huh? Nah, I appreciate you joining me today for this interview, man. Appreciate you coming on the podcast. Nah, thank you so much, Mikey T. I appreciate you having me, though. Thank you, man. You know, um, I got an album out right now. I blame me is in stores. Um, y'all go play, y'all go play that stream, that joint, man. I blame me. It's a beautiful album. Um, shout out to all my people, shout out to the Black Male Voting Project. Shout out to um shit, shout out to your platform, King. I appreciate you having me.